The Red Cross does much more in your community than just lend a hand during large scale disasters. We're going to find out what they respond to twice a day in Oregon. Welcome to Comcast Newsmakers. I'm Ken Ackerman. Joining us is Kara Sloman. She is the Region Disaster Program Officer with the Red Cross. Thanks so much for being with us. Thanks for having me. Um, you launched a campaign this fall because it's not the tornadoes, it's not the hurricanes, it's not the large scale disasters that we're focused on right now. There's something much more important that the Red Cross responds to daily. Twice a day we respond to disasters across Oregon and Southwest Washington and the vast majority of those are home fires. In 2012, more people lost their lives in home fires than Hurricane Sandy, Hurricane Katrina, and the tornadoes of 2011 combined. You know, when we think of the Red Cross, a lot of people think, okay, we're gonna go in, I'm gonna give blood, and I'm glad they're there if I ever need blood, and that's that. But it's, it's so much different, and it's so much more than just that. It's an amazing network of 1,700 volunteers that respond across Oregon and Southwest Washington. We have teams of volunteers that are on call 24 hours a day, seven days a week, responding to home fires whenever they happen, whether it's two in the morning or two in the afternoon. A Red Cross volunteer will be there to make sure people have immediate access to food, clothing, and shelter after they've suffered such a devastating event. So uh, that's what I was gonna ask, if you could expound on that a little more. I, I, I was wondering what the Red Cross does that a paramedic can't do, that a doctor, that a fireman on the scene mm -hmm. can't do. What does the Red Cross come in and uh, take care of? So we get on scene um, and find out from the fire department, you know, the extent of damage, what, what's happened. And then our volunteers talk directly with the families to find out, do they, do they have some place to stay tonight? Do they have food? Do they have clothing? Did they lose their medications in the fire? Do they have other essential medical needs as a result of the disaster? We also have mental health volunteers that are on call to provide emotional support. Mm -hmm. And so those Red Cross volunteer responders on scene, they work with the family, really listen to their story and how the disasters impacted their life, and then look at the Red Cross assistance um, and how they can best apply that to help this family get on the road to recovery. Now, a smoke alarm uh, is important. Yes. And in fact, you know, because someone that you may know may have been cooking the other night and the smoke alarm went off. Yeah, so my husband was cooking dinner. As I didn't he can mention only your do. husband. I, I know. didn't mention you went it was there. your husband. Okay. Um, and he set off the smoke alarm in our house. Um, we happen to live um, in a unit that has a hardwired smoke alarm, but it has a hush feature. And that's the great thing on the modern smoke alarms nowadays. I remember when I was a kid, right. my mom would often burn something in the kitchen. Huh. We'd go pry that battery out of the smoke alarm, and it would sit out there for weeks. So we literally... Right. days or weeks there was no working smoke alarm in so the bad house. cooking runs in the family it does, well not with me but with my <laughs> husband and my mother it certainly does um, so but we had a hush feature so we got the press a button uh -huh. which just made it not go off for 10 minutes and so there, he could finish cooking we didn't have to listen to the smoke alarm and now it's still working there's not a battery sitting on the counter and that's a problem because a lot of people do unhook their batteries and they forget do. to hook it back up um, there are certain zip codes in the area that that you're really focusing on yeah, so we did an analysis taking a look at fire-related deaths and injuries as well as Red Cross response activity in zip codes, all, all the zip codes across Oregon and Southwest Washington. And using those factors, we came up with the top 10 zip codes for fire-related deaths and injuries. And we launched our home fire preparedness campaign this fall. And we've already visited two of those zip codes. Uh, we started off in Salem and in Grants Pass. Those were our number one and number mm. two zip codes uh -huh. um, in the area for fire-related deaths and injuries. And throughout calendar year 2015, we're going to have home fire preparedness events in the remaining eight zip codes and some additional locations where Red Cross volunteers will go knocking door to door, asking folks to test their smoke alarms. Right. And if they test them and they're not working or they don't have them installed, installing them on the spot. And then also talking with families about general disaster preparedness and helping them complete a home fire safety escape plan. All right, very good. Kara Sloman, thank you very much for joining us on Comcast Newsmakers. Thank you for being here as well. Make it a great day, everyone.